So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today among uh, esteemed colleagues and members of the Greek and international shipping cluster. And uh, on behalf of Merck Training, thank you for having us. So in case uh, you don't know us, because I know most people know the bigger Maersk um, with the blue star, uh, but most people don't know that um, Maersk uh, has also an, uh, a training provider, which is us, Maersk Training, um, and our foundations actually come off uh, from the offshore industry. So basically, we train uh, not only for the maritime industry, we train people also for um, the offshore uh, industry, for the oil and gas industry, but also for the um, uh, offshore wind industry. So this is, this is a bit of um, our background. And I'm opening the panel today, and our panel is discussing a rather critical and crucial topic, that of essential skills and crew development. And the truth is um, that we hear a lot about the skills needed to ensure that our crews are well prepared uh, for the challenges they face today, especially after an accident. But what happens about the future? And I believe you will agree that at this point we cannot talk about um, crew development without addressing um, the elephant in the room, and that is, of course, the green transition. Um, of course, this will not happen um, overnight by pressing a button, and unfortunately, it requires also a heavy investment. Too often, when we are discussing uh, about decarbonization, we, the focus is solely on, on technology and infrastructure or logistics or supply chains. Uh, we think about new fuels like, um, like methanol, uh, new vessels um, and emission targets. But we often forget that it will be people, our seafarers, who operate these vessels. And with this comes a whole new set uh, of safety standards and skills requirements. So today, I want to focus on how we prepare our crews for the future and ensure that they're not just skilled, but safe in this evolving landscape. So to put things into a perspective, depending on how fast our industry moves towards decarbonization, 300,000 to 750,000 seafarers will need to be trained on alternative fuel technologies by 2040. That's hundreds of thousands of crew members who need to understand the complexities and the difficulties of handling new fuels. Um, there are associated risks because new fuels do come with safety concerns um, and how to ensure safe operations on board. So these numbers highlight the magnitude of the talents. We are not so, we're not just talking about retraining a small subset of our seafarers. We are talking about thousand people. So this is an industry-wide transformation. And probably you will ask me, um, what are the specific skills we need to develop? Well, of course, we don't uh, have all the answers, but what we can predict uh, is you know, the obvious. We need the technical skills, and even though it's, it's obvious, uh, we need to emphasize that. Seafarers must be proficient in handling alternative fuels, um, be it methanol, LNG, or in the future, ammonia. Um, its fuel brings its own complexities. Uh, whether it's their volatile properties um, or specific safety um, and storage uh, procedures. And the workforce must be trained uh, to use uh, these fuels effectively and efficiently. So in one of our trainings, we are conducting uh, simulator-based uh, methanol uh, training. Um, and what usually comes uh, as a shock 
of course they know it, but it's shocking when you see it, uh, is that uh, methanol burns with an invisible flame, invisible to the naked eye. So usually this is uh, mostly a cultural shock when you come to realize it and come face to face. Because the first do know that, but sometimes they lack the actual skill of handling uh, that sort uh, of safety risks. Uh, at the same time, equally important, um, our leadership, teamwork, and adaptability of so, soft skills. As we introduce uh, new technologies and processes, the ability to communicate effectively across cultures, collaborate across different teams, um, and lead under pressure will become uh, critical. And I think somebody from the previous panel did mention about automation, and automation uh, equals with automation fatigue. So um, the industry is becoming more and more digital. So whether it's uh, data decision uh, driven, uh, sorry, data driven decision making, uh, predictive maintenance, or managing complex uh, digital system, the workforce needs to be digitally literate. And finally, we need seafarers who understand their role in promoting sustainability. They need to be more than just operators. They must become stewards of the environment. But of course, all of these, they do come with challenges. And first and foremost, there are glaring inequalities in the availability of training programs across different regions. While some countries or companies uh, may have the resources to train their workforce, uh, many do not. This creates an uneven playing field uh, where seafarers are, some seafarers are well prepared and others are not. And of course, maritime is an industry that's steeped into tradition. Um, many seafarers have been doing things in a certain ways for decades and asking them to adopt new fuels and new technologies can be met with resistance. And of course, this is very, very understandable. But another hurdle we face is, of course, our regulatory field, the STCW Convention and the IGF Code provide a solid foundation for maritime training, but they do not go far enough. Uh, these frameworks, as they are today, do not fully cover the complexities of handling alternative fuels or the digital technologies uh, that are becoming central to maritime. And since we are discussing um, the regulations, how are we building skills today? So basically right now we uh, base our skills building on, on compliance. Uh, we base um, our skills and competencies um, on STCW and the IGF code. Um, and one can argue that this STCW needs to catch up uh, with the current needs and trends. Um, specifically, for alternative fuels, we have the IGF code, which specifies two levels of training, the basic and the advanced. And these levels of training, they are critical, but they are not standalone solutions. Um, because apart from the requirement for the refresher training, we see that too often training is seen as a one-time event, as a tick-the-box exercise, as a checklist that we just need to fill it in. So this leads me to a very crucial question. Are our crews well-trained for the challenges ahead? And as you will see from the survey from, from DNV, the short answer is no. So, or at least not yet. So um, across different departments, engine and deck, and across different roles, uh, we see that most seafarers currently, uh, they are either partially trained or they are not sufficiently trained. I think this is pretty alarming for the industry as it is right now. So we did conduct uh, a few weeks ago at MERSC training um, a webinar. Uh, so we had uh, a very good, very good audience and we asked them, um, the webinar was about uh, crew readiness and alternative fuels, and we asked our audience what was their main concern when it comes to alternative fuels? Uh, what is the industry missing with regards to crew readiness? And an alarming 42% uh, 
uh, answered its insufficient training programs, while a 19% replied that it's safety risks. And then we also have a lack of experience. So um, some of you might know, uh, I'm also an active uh, academic. I, I teach in, in universities. So as you know, we academics, we do like a very good survey and we do like uh, quantitative data. So this is why we have started implementing uh, in our training program some surveys regarding um, green skills. So we have, uh, we have started to ask our crews after the training that they receive, either on IGF or, or methanol, um, their views on safety culture related to alternative fuels. So this is some preliminary data from what we have gathered so far. Uh, and of course, it's not uh, the full scope of the survey, it's just uh, a snippet because I only have one minute. Um, so the first thing that we ask them uh, is the effectiveness of training methods on alternative fuels. And as you will see, most seafarers will agree that what they need, what they think is more effective on alternative fuels, it's either simulator-based simulator uh, programs or on board on the job training. So probably um, other solutions uh, such as self-paced e-learning is not very effective when it comes to alternative fuels and, and safety. And then we are asking them about safety culture. What do they think is um, the most critical, critical skills uh, related to safety culture and alternative fuels? And they think uh, that the most critical skill is emergency management. Of course, equally critical are the knowledge of safety regulations and the knowledge of technical properties of alternative fuels. But now, here's the deal. They also think that the skill from safety culture that currently is lacking is emergency management. So I think we might be missing a point uh, when we see safety training. And of course, how we can bridge the skill gaps, that's, that's a huge question. And of course, we may not have all the answers, but training can no longer be a one-time event. Uh, we need to foster a, a mindset of continuous learning where seafarers are constantly upskilling throughout their careers. And many people, uh, discussed and said that what we are lacking as an industry is, is collaboration across institutions and across organizations. And indeed, uh, we need to push for uniform, globally consistent standards that are up to date and aligned with the carbonization uh, goals. We need to put uh, all the industry players uh, in an alignment regarding the training that we need uh, when it comes to safety standards. So in the end, um, the green transition isn't just about rolling out new technologies. It's about making sure that our people are ready and trained to use this technology safely. And that brings me to a thought. I think the quote is by Nikos Kazazakis. In order to succeed, we must first believe we can. If we believe in our crew's uh, ability to adapt, grow, and thrive in this new landscape, uh, we can focus on equipping them with the skills they need. So when we prioritize the human factor alongside technological progress, we'll be in the best position to navigate this transition smoothly and safely. Thank you very much.